Today, the issues facing Jeff are more challenging and relevant than ever. The COVID-19 pandemic, along with climate change and biodiversity loss, are underscoring the urgent need for increased development assistance and support for global public goods. The World Bank is a founding member of the GEF, providing many of the important functions that help support GEF. Together, we have helped countries to strengthen the conservation and sustainable use of natural resources, increase energy efficiency and renewables, and build the resilience of vulnerable communities to climate change. The Jeff investments have had transformational impacts for people and the planet. One example is the Sahel and West Africa program in 12 countries that are highly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. Jeff grants supported financing for IDA to restore degraded lands, shore up food supply, and boost the livelihoods and resilience of more than 19 million people. Jeff's supported investments in the Sahel program are also playing an important role in strengthening adaptation. With Jeff's support, the World Bank and IFC are working with cities around the world to integrate carbon reduction and resilience into urban planning. I've been glad to see a strong global consensus form on the necessity of integrating climate and development. To be successful, the world community is fully engaged in identifying transformational projects to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and funding them with a growing pool of grants from private foundations and carbon offsets. We also need to increase funding for adaptation. In our Climate Change Action Plan, we're committed to providing at least half of our climate finance for adaptation, which is particularly important for low-income countries. We look forward to our continued partnership with the Jeff as we build global efforts toward a green, resilient and inclusive future for all. 30 years ago, the Global Environment Facility was established to tackle the world's most complex environmental challenges. And today, as we gather after COP26, we know that the Glasgow Climate Pact has kept 1.5 alive, but only just. We have eight years to halve emissions, to convert climate promises into action, to ensure that finance flows protect and restore the earth, and to transform our societies and economies. This is a task for us all. And quite simply, we can't get there without the Global Environment Facility. So I thank our friends at the GEF for all that you do to protect people and planet. And I look forward to working together to seeing how we can stretch even further to realize that ambition of stabilizing the climate, of ending biodiversity loss, and of overcoming pollution and waste. CEO and Chairperson of the Global Environment Facility, my dear friend and colleague, Carlos Manuel Rodriguez, members of the Council, dear friends and colleagues. I'm delighted to join you for truly a landmark occasion, the 30th anniversary of the Global Environment Facility. What started as a pilot program on the eve of the Rio Earth Summit has developed into this unique partnership that now unites 184 countries, 18 partner agencies, and a growing network of civil society and private sector actors. It is now the largest multilateral source of funds for environmental action in developing countries and provides approximately $1 billion per year for action across key areas including sustainable cities, forests, land use, and the illegal wildlife trade, just to mention a few areas in which we have accompanied countries in their work. UNDP is proud to be a founding partner of the Global Environment Facility, not least because together we have achieved some remarkable results. With this support, over half a million farmers have, for instance, benefited from improved food security and more resilient livelihoods. And UNDP's partnership with the GEF on the establishment of the Small Grants Program is yet another example of something quite unique in the landscape of funding and support for local community and civil society actions. Over 130 countries, including least developed countries, small island developing states, and countries in fragile contexts, are assisted today by UNDP to access critical GEF resources and enabling us to accompany them on the journey of applying them. Yet, the need to tackle our planet's environmental challenges has never been more urgent. The next 30 years must see the world deliver on a range of key objectives and targets. 
That includes taking decisive climate action, transforming our food systems and propelling a clean energy transition and ultimately moving us into a green economy of the future. As we aim for the global goals, we must chart a new course towards a sustainable, equitable, livable and climate resilient future that is in balance with nature and our environment. To get there, the United Nations family as a whole will continue to rely on the bold vision, the unwavering commitment and ceaseless energy of our friends and colleagues who come together under the umbrella of the Global Environment Facility. At UNDP, we thank you for your collective efforts and we look forward to working together in these crucial years ahead to build that world with people and planet in equilibrium, each one of us contributing as best as we can to this objective. Thank you and happy anniversary. There was enough confidence in me to ask me to come up with the final shape of the facility. They pulled back. They said, you know, all our concerns, you come up with the plan. And I did a two pager that covered the basic principles and concerns and interests of both sides. It came together in March of 1994 in Geneva at three in the morning. And I can't tell, but being emotional when I think about that, because it was unbelievable. And the plot went on and on and on. EF has to be a living institution. And a living institution means that the rules have to change when the time is ripe for change. GF has certainly the chance to live many, many, many more years if it lives with its time. We, we see that all those environmental questions cannot be seen in silos. And, and GF is the only financial instrument for environment because it has a capacity to deal with climate change, with biodiversity, with desertification, with chemicals, can try to maximize the impact on every aspect of those questions. I was trying to do two things during my um, eight years. The one is how to uh, close the gap of the state of global commons versus this decision making. The second thing I'm trying to do is that the impact is limited in that small fragmented project. So the question is that is there any way to uh, magnify uh, the impact? How can we really take much more the system uh, based approach? I always thought that this financial instrument uh, that was formed by the World Bank, UNDP, and UNEP was a very innovative, creative, and useful mechanism to deal with the emerging issues of the international and global agenda. Besides, was also, and this is really what I consider really most important, was a new model for the UN system in how to build institutions. As the fifth co-chair of the Council and as a participant of the replenishment and the negotiation of the instrument in the early 90s, I will always remember the support of all actors in this process. The international organizations, the governments, the civil society. Following the news on climate change, especially the last COP in Glasgow, I was very pleased to see young generations very, be very motivated and into climate change. This is something we really wanted for a long time. And they were complaining a lot and pushing for financing for developing countries, thinking that nothing had was done before. Well, actually, the Jeff did it. The Jeff did it a decade ago. And I had the honor and the pleasure to manage, to manage the first two funds that piloted adaptation financing with $1 billion with the least developing countries fund and the Special Climate Change Fund, and partially the beginning of the adaptation fund. We just concluded a climate COP where the need for immense global financial aids was underscored. 
The GF now stands at an opportune moment. We are at the threshold of the eighth replenishment. And this offers an opportunity for the replenishment to be several magnitudes higher compared to earlier replenishments. In this context, I would like to wish the GEF replenishment parties, the GEF council and the staff at the agencies and at the secretariat in meeting this challenge. We are at the crossroad in our history and we need to take the right decisions. These should be science-based decisions with a lot of political wisdom and vision. So the decisions that we will be taking the next decade are critical to the future of humankind.